Okay. Um, I am now going to try to attempt uh, eternal security part eight, apostolic meltdown. And so with this, guys, it's going to be very important. I'm going to cover two examples. Um, sorry for the last periscope. It kind of, hey, Des, uh, last periscope kind of died out on me. I told you after so uh, long, it freezes up. I got to try to, I've been failing miserably on this, guys. Um, I'm supposed to keep this these like at 30 to 45 minute intervals, and I've been kind of, they've been going over an hour, guys. And uh, I definitely wanted to cover these two examples in the Bible of eternal security. So with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and dive right into this. <clears throat> I started my timer, and um, let me move these around over here. Hey, Brother Scotty. Okay. First one we're going to start with is uh, Job. Okay? We're going to hit Job real quick. <clears throat> I always hear from people that say, you can live a holy, sanctified life and never sin anymore after you're saved if, if you're like Job, because Job never sinned. Got a problem with that, guys. Got a problem with that. You know Brother Ed, man. He's going to find something in the Bible because we're all sinners, right? <laughs> okay, guys. Man, I don't have any towel. I'm starting to sweat in here, guys. Um, all right. Let's do this. Job. Let's flip the screen. Okay. Job chapter 1. Now. Let's, let's, let's just read some context here and, okay, while he was yet speaking, let's start here. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and it fell upon the young men and they were dead. They are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Come on, guys. There's some bad stuff happening to Job. We, we really feel sorry for Job. And, and I only escaped alone to tell thee. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. And the Lord gave and the Lord had taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. I like that song. Now look at the next verse. In all this Job sinned not nor charged God foolishly. Back. Let's go back, guys. You ready? There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was what? Perfect. And what? Upright. And one that feared God. And what? Eschewed evil. <clears throat> guys. Oh, the standard's really high, isn't it? Boy, he's perfect. He's upright. He's he's a shoe'd evil. It's like shoe, shoe evil, shoe. How many of us do that? And he feared God. Now, now, guys, sounds sinless, don't he? He sounds sinless, right? Now, now, let's go back to that passage we read at the very last part of Job chapter one. Okay, let's do this. Let's go down. What does it say? What does it say? After Satan came down and did his deeds. In all this, Job what? He sinned not, right? So what do people say? Job, you ready? Job never sinned. He sinned not. But what are we missing in all this? All right, guys. That moment when Satan was doing that to Job, in all that. Job didn't sin. It didn't say he never sinned. He said in all that, he never sinned. All right, let's do this again. Ready? Job chapter 2. But he said unto her, Speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. Remember when she was, you know, cursed God and die. Remember that? So he's speaking to his wife. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? Shall we not receive evil? Now look at this. In all this did did. Not Job sin with his lips. Now, does it say he never sinned or in all this? 
guy's got to read that, man. It, context is everything. Read carefully what it says. All right, you guys ready for this? Job chapter 7, verse 20. Hold on, Dis. Hold on. We'll, we'll cover perfection in a minute. Um, you got at least seven definitions of perfection in the Bible, by the way. Okay. Um, let me... Come on. Really? Clear up. Am I impatient? I guess I'm sinning. <laughs> okay, guys. Here we go. How long wilt thou not depart from me, nor, nor let me alone, till I swallow down my spittle? Now, wait. Who's talking? Let's go back. There a point in time in the earth. Hold on. Let's keep going down. Let's keep going down. Keep going down. Okay, let's go back. We got to find out who's talking, right? Uh-oh, what are we getting here? Job answered and said what? So let's keep going down. All right, guys. Flip it over. This is how you do it, guys. You find out who's talking. Now you go down. Okay, there you go. Job is still talking. He starts in verse 6 to 7. So Job is the one talking right now, guys. Now I want you later to read Job 6 and 7, and you tell me if he's talking, okay? But right now, what we're going to do is, um, let me hit the verse. Job chapter 7, verse 20. We'll start with our paragraph mark up here, okay? What is man that thou should, shouldest magnify him, and that thou shouldest set thine heart upon him, and that thou shouldest visit him every morning, and try him every moment? How long wilt thou not depart from me, nor let me alone till I swallow down my spittle? Now look, at, look, look right here. I have sinned. What shall I do unto thee, O thou preserver of men? Why hast thou set me as a mark against thee, so that I am a burden to myself? Did, look, look, look what it says, look, 21. And why dost thou not pardon my transgression, and take away mine iniquity? Okay, if Job never sinned, why does he say I've sinned? Why does he say for God to pardon his transgression? Why does he say for God to take away his iniquity? I thought Job was sinless. You got a problem there, guys. You got a problem. All right, guys, you ready? Here we go. There's 21. Now, let's hit. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to hit Job chapter 32. Here we go, guys. You ready? Job chapter 32, verse 1. So these three men ceased to answer Job, because why? Again, I had to pause there. I wanted you guys to read that. He was righteous in his own eyes. Then was kindled the wrath of Elihu, the son of Barako the Buzite. Of the, of the kindred of Ram. Against Job was his wrath kindled. You ready? Because he justified himself rather than God. Are you really going to tell me that Job never sinned? Are you really, do you really want to go down that road and say you're scriptural? Guys, that's not true. You ready? I'm going to hit this and then we'll cover another verse. Here it is. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Everybody's a sinner, guys. Are you a sinner today? Are you saved? Are you still a sinner? The answer would have to be yes. Because even Job, you know, the, that, that, that used to be the trophy that all the holy people go to. Well, you need to be like Job. He's perfect. He's sinless. He's right. He's holy. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. You, you, know, you know, he starts doing it at the end of Job. He starts questioning God. 
And then God says, okay, will thou that, 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 will thou the one that's created question the one that, that, that's created him? God rebukes Job. See, guys, he was only righteous. He, look, look, he was only righteous in the fact that he didn't sin concerning when Satan was, was uh, persecuting him and doing all those things to him. He didn't sin in those things. And so, so we commend him. And so we look at those things that Job did and we can apply that practically. Like, I probably wouldn't have acted like Job. I probably would have fell to the wayside on some of that stuff. You know, my whole family dies. I mean, every, everything's taken away from me. Who knows how I would act? I might not even be a Job. You might not even be a Job. But we can look at Job and we can see, we can see that it is possible for a man to do that. Guys, you got to get a hold of this, man, because this is eternal security. That's my first example of eternal security. And let me show you a few more verses, guys, because the Bible doesn't contradict itself, okay? Here we go. Remember we hit Romans 3.23, right? Romans 3.10. Remember, Job thought he was righteous in his own eyes. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. It didn't say as it is written, there's none righteous except Job. The only one. No, guys, there is none righteous. No, not one. Not even Job. Okay? So, um, another one. Ecclesiastes 7.20. There is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. That means Job too. Everybody. David, Job, the patriarchs, everybody. Apostle Paul, Peter, Everybody, everybody, name it. Anybody wrote the any, any anybody that wrote the New Testament epistles, anybody that wrote the Old Testament, they're all sinners. Every single one of them. The holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Those guys, yes, they were sinners. Hopefully that makes sense, guys, because we're all sinners. Now God can use us and we can be holy, but no but everybody still falls and everybody gets back up. Okay, guys? Um, Leviticus 19.28, thou shalt not put any cuttings in the flesh. And no, that was something that heathen were doing. And so even though it's applied to Israel as a law, they weren't supposed to do it because the heathen were committing those sins. So no, no cuttings in the flesh. Not even, uh, are you ready? Not even praying hands. Not even John 3.16 on your arm. No cuttings. Okay, really quick. Let's hit it. Let's hit it. Because I, I, I kind of grilled you guys with the Job thing here. Yeah. Yeah, Des. Des, rounding of the facial hair. So, um, but the rounding of the facial hair, that was a, that was a, a specific uh, law given to the Jews to make them peculiar people. But the cuttings of the flesh, they were told not to do that because that the heathen were doing that to their own flesh. And they weren't supposed to do that because it was absolutely wrong. So you have standards of conduct that you aren't supposed to do because heathen were doing those. Kind of like bestiality is not even mentioned in the New Testament epistles. But is it still wrong? Is it still wrong to do bestiality? It was pretty sick to even talk about it. But, I mean, if we're on that topic, then yeah. Yeah, it would still be wrong to do it. So, you see, there are things in the Old Testament law that was given to the Jews that we can apply today because we can see that the heathen were doing those things and they were absolutely wrong. And so God incorporated that into the law in which we can look back at the Jewish law and say, wait a minute. I'm not supposed to do the rounded beard and all that. I'm not supposed to do, you know, the shrimp thing and all that because that was given to specifically to the Jews. But there were things that were given to the Jews they weren't supposed to do because the heathen were sinning against God when they did it. And so you have to rightly divide those things, okay? Because what, what, what you fall into is people say, well, you're just picking and choosing which parts of the old, with old Testament law you can keep. No, no, we're not. We're just saying, we're looking at the heathen, what they were doing. And God said, that's absolutely wrong. You can't do that. And so God incorporated to the Jewish law. So just because he incorporated to the Jewish law doesn't mean that everything that God gave to the Jews, we couldn't apply to us, okay? Now, now, I'm not saying we're under the Jewish law, okay? I'm by no means saying that. I'm saying we can glean things off of the Jewish law and say, wait a minute, okay? It, it's not right for, for a woman to wear that which pertaineth to a man. Now, okay, you see, you see it, 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 it gets hard because now you're getting into Christian conduct, okay? Christian conduct, it, it, it involves you being saved, first of all. Second of all, 
your willing desire to yield to the word of God through the Holy Spirit. That's what it is, guys. And when you read stuff like it's an abomination for, for a woman to wear that which pertained to a man, you would say, wait a minute, if as a woman, I'm going to wear things which pertain to a woman. No, I don't have to wear the Jewish dress of, of an Israelite woman, but that was something pretty clear that was given to the Jews, but that we can glean for today as, as considering a woman, period, a woman, any woman. So you have distinctions between a woman and a man. See, and, and what people do is they always say, well, well, if you can take that verse, then you can take the next verse too. No, because you would say, well, what would that verse be applying to? Jew, the Jews being a peculiar people and God giving them specific laws just for them? Or would that be dealing with, with the nature of a man and a woman? And so I can go to the Old Testament and learn things like the laws of submission in Genesis, even though it was given to Adam and Eve. We do that all the time, guys. And so you do the same thing with the Jewish law. There are some things given that, that we can glean from. And there, there are other things that are specifically for the Jews, like the tassels on the clothes. Um, uh, Rich, we are not going to use the WTF on here or any other foul language on here. Uh, I'll have to block you if you do. So just keep it clean and you're welcome to stay on as long as you can. That's fine. You can make fun of me, whatever you want. Keep it clean, though. All right, guys, hopefully that makes sense. I covered that. And so um, what do we want to do now? We want to, we're going to hit Job one more time, guys. Job, we'll finish off Job real quick. And I'm going, to, I'm going to show you the verse that people give that Job is totally sinless, okay? And we just saw that he wasn't, right? So you'll, we're already there. We're already there. We already know Job, Job's a sinner, right? So, so let's do this verse, and I'll show you the verse that people give to show that Job is sinless, because we want to hear both sides, right? We're not biased. We're going to hear both sides. Okay, so here we go. Job chapter 33. Well, let's read this in context, and we'll work ourselves down to verse 13, okay, guys? Wherefore, Job, I pray thee, hear my word speeches, uh, and hearken to all my words. Behold, now I have opened my mouth. My, my tongue hath spoken in my mouth. My words shall be of the uprightness of my heart, and my lips shall utter knowledge clearly. The Spirit of God hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. Now, now, who's speaking here? It's Elihu, if you guys don't know. Let's go back. I, I want you guys to know who's speaking before we even go, okay? Um, right here. Elihu, the son of Borrego, the Buzite, answered. Okay? So let's go down, and you'll see he's the only one speaking right here. Be Elihu, okay? Now, Elihu is speaking, right? Now, let's go to the next chapter. Okay, now, where were we at? So, we know everything I just read, Elihu is speaking, right? So, my word shall be of the uprightness of my heart, and my lips shall utter knowledge clearly. The Spirit of God hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. If thou canst answer me, set thy words in order before me, stand up. Behold, I am... Behold, I am according to thy wish in God's stead. I also am formed out of the clay. Behold, my terror shall not make thee afraid. Neither shall my hand be heavy upon thee. Surely thou hast spoken in mine hearing, and I have heard the voice of thy words, saying, What is Elihu saying that Job said? I am clean without transgression. I am innocent. Neither is there iniquity in me. See, see, guys, Job is sinless. He's, he's clean without transgression. He's innocent. And who's talking there? Elihu is saying, hey, Job, I heard you speaking, and I heard what you said. You said, I am clean without transgression. I'm innocent, neither is there iniquity in me. But look what it says. Behold, he findeth occasion against me. He counteth me for his enemy. He putteth my feet in the stocks. He marketh my paths. And look, look, look what happens. Behold, in this thou art not just. Look, Elihu said, Behold, in this thou art not just. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Isn't, didn't we just read in Job chapter 1 verse 1 that Job was a just man? I'm just saying. The Bible, guys, you got to let the Bible define the Bible. You got to stop adding stuff in there, guys. Let the Bible define the Bible. And what you'll see is there's no contradictions in the Bible. 
Job is a sinner. Why? Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's everyone. That's Old and New Testament. All are sinners. All. Okay, guys. Um, here it is. Um, look what it says. Behold, in this thou art not just. I will answer thee that God is greater than man. Does that not sound like a rebuke to you? Look what it says. Why dost thou, that's Job, Elihu is rebuking Job. Why dost thou strive against him? For he giveth not account of any of his matters. And then, yep, none of that. Sorry, not, none of the foul language, guys. Use foul language, you're going to get ejected out of here. Um, okay, guys, so there it is in a nutshell. And then here, here it is. And he gives this whole thing on dreams, guys. And you guys can read that on your own later, okay? But just read it. Read it, guys. I'm not scared of context, guys. Context actually supports what we believe as Bible-believing Christians. Guys, context never scared me. I will go to any verses that you want me to go to. And that's that's the point. You need to be consistent in the Scriptures. And the, and the Scriptures have continuity. They don't contradict each other, okay? Whether it's Old Testament or New Testament. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Okay, guys? They will they will back up each other. Precept upon precept, line upon line, right? Okay, guys, that's that's step one. Now, I'm gonna save you guys having to be with me for 180 hours here. Amen. Amen, Des. Scripture has continuity. That that's the one of the best statements you can make concerning the whole Bi the Bible as a whole. It has to have continuity. If, if you find a break somewhere, there's something, there's something. I always say, if I'm reading my Bible and I find somewhere where it's not connecting, there's something wrong with me. <laughs> I'm, I'm not studying something right. And so what I need to do is if I see something contradict, what do I do? I say, wait a minute, those don't contradict. It's my understanding that's contradicting. And I need to fix my understanding of the passage by learning what it means. And so study to show yourself approved unto God. That's what we got to do, guys. We've got to labor in the in the word. And it's weary. The labor that we do is it's really weary, guys. I mean, daily, I painstakingly go through the Bible and study painstakingly, verse by verse by verse by verse by verse by word by word. What does this word mean? Let's define this word. What does that verse mean? Oh, that verse cross-references that. Oh, I'm, I'm wrong. It really doesn't cross-reference that. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't line up. Okay, I'm wrong about that. And you're constantly doing that, guys, because none of us got it figured out. I, I mean, the whole Bible as a whole, none of us got it figured out. I mean, there are verses in there that I, nobody can explain. You are right about that, bro. Amen. Okay. Um, dead things are formed in the sea. Okay. Explain that to me, guys. Dead things are formed in the sea. Job. I, I, I found Job to be one of the hardest books to understand. There are so many things in the book of Job that are just like, whoa. That's a standalone verse. It's all by itself. There is no cross-references. And you just got to kind of leave those alone. You see what I'm saying? Guys, there's some verses that you don't know, and it, and, and it may be in a lifetime when you're 80 years old studying the Bible, it may come all together as you study the Bible, like, oh, I know what that is. Holy Spirit reveal it to you. But, but guys, there's some things that we just don't know. Our finite minds can't understand, comprehend, and that's the Bible. God is greater than our minds, and it's good. It's good to know that. I mean, it humbles us. It lets us know, wait a minute, you know, I'm not a Mr. Know-it-all, you know? So, I mean, guys, I'm not ashamed if I can't answer one of your questions. And, guys, you don't tear down my faith if I can't answer one of your questions. I'm just like, hey, that's just something more I need to learn. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I want to learn it. That's, I mean, that's how I got to where I'm at now. I mean, people ask me questions I don't know the answer to. I go home, I study it, like, okay, next time somebody asks ask me the question, I'll answer it. You know, I got the answer now. But the pro problem with that is when I used to do that, I never get to ask the same question again. So it's kind of like I know it, but never got to apply it. So, but amen, but it's good because you learn it. So later you can teach it. So praise the Lord. So, so with that being said, guys, let me hit this other example. Again, or eternal security, okay? Um, I was going to go to Hebrews 11, but I'm, I figured it's going to take too much time to do that. 
And so I was going to give you the pre or, or, or the supposition for Hebrews 11 and then kind of go through it. We were going to go through it painstakingly verse by verse. And I'll show you that every single, every single person, because what we call Hebrews 11, I'm already going through it right now. Um, every, every single, you know, we, we classify Hebrews 11 as the roll call of faith. And what you have is people that didn't live a holy life. <laughs> we got people that messed up bad in Hebrews 11. And they're still saved. <laughs> Hebrews eleven six. What pleases God? Faith, right? We, uh, um, I, I can't quote it. I, I can't remember the the actual verse. Uh, it's a, uh, but uh, but without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. So, without faith, you can't please God. N notice it didn't say without holy living. It's faith alone, guys, because none of, if you go through Hebrews 11, none of those guys live the holy life. Or, and there may, there may be somebody that may have gotten a little bit of holy life in there, but everybody messed up pretty bad. Okay, Hebrews 11, guys, we'll hit that next time. I just, maybe you'll be interested to tune in on the next broadcast and, and I'll cover, you know, Hebrews 11. But um, right now, we're going to hit another example of somebody. A particular person that uh, messed up pretty bad and he was justified by faith okay um, he messed up bad he I mean it didn't even look like he even tried in his life at all <laughs> I mean he willingly sinned okay so let's go ahead and hit this guys okay here we go uh, let me get my notes together here okay Okay, if you guys would, turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 13. Genesis chapter 13. Genesis chapter 13, guys. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Scotty got that one figured out pretty quick. Yep. Lot. Um, this is serious. This is pretty serious, guys. It's pretty serious. Okay. Here we go. You guys ready? I care about you. I want you to have the best walk you can with the Lord. But you know what? You got to realize if your walk isn't good, you do not lose your salvation. Because if you could lose your salvation with your walk with the Lord, then here we have a man that God lied about and said he was justified because he had no walk with the Lord. You ready for this, guys? Hopefully it drew some interest to keep watching. <laughs> Here we go, guys. I'm going to flip the screen. Here it is. Here we go, guys. Let's read it. And Abraham went out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all he had, and there's Lot, Lot with him, info uh, in, into the south. And Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver, and gold. And he went on his journeys from the south, even to Bethel, unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Ai, unto the place of the altar, which he had made there at the first. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. Look, Abram called on the name of the Lord. What do you guys got to do to be saved? Romans ten thirteen. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be what? Hold on, let's do it. Romans 10, 13, what does it say? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Let's go back. Genesis 13. Where were we at? where somebody was calling on the name of the Lord, right? Now, where where was that at again, guys? Right here in 13.4. Unto the place of the altar which he had made, there at the first, there Abram called on the name of the Lord. You ready? And Lot also. What do you got to do to be saved? Call on the name of the Lord, and you are what? Saved. Hopefully that makes sense, guys. 
Lot is a saved man. I need to, I need, we need to clarify that right now. Lot, Genesis 13, 5, look at it. He called on the name of the Lord. That's all it takes, and you're saved, okay, by faith. The faith you have in the Lord, okay? Now, you guys ready for this? Lot, let's look at this, in Genesis 13, 12. Abraham dwelt, or Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in what? The cities of the plain, and pitched his tent, where? Towards Sodom. Now, obviously Lot knew this, but the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. What is Lot doing? Pitching his tent toward Sodomites. Men with men doing that which is unseemly. But there it is. You ready? Let's go to our next one. Oh, I got one more verse to cover, guys, before we go on. You ready? Uh, concerning this passage right here. He pitched his tent toward Sodom. Okay? Romans chapter 13, verse 14. Look at the bottom. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and what? And make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. What did Lot do? What did Lot do? He made provision for the flesh, did he not? Did he not? Did he make provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof? Why would you pitch your tent towards Sodom when you know it's full of wicked Sodomites? But he did. Now question, guys. Question. Let me flip the screen. Just in that alone, he made provision for the flesh. The Bible says we're not to do that. If I made provision for the flesh, would that be a sin? It would. That'd be a sin. So did Lot lose his son? I mean, that's just one, okay? We, we, we're not even going to keep... We didn't even go any, anywhere else yet. He made provision for the flesh. Did he sin? Yes, he sinned. And so if you're saying that you have to, to be holy, we already have a bad start on this thing. It's, it's really bad right now, okay, guys? He pitched his tent towards Sodomites. Now, now look. We're going to hit our next one. Genesis chapter 14 Verse 12, and they took Lot, Abram's brother's son, who what? Who what? Who dwelt in Sodom. Wait a minute. Before he just pitched his tent in the direction of Sodom. Now he's dwelling in Sodom? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What verse were you violating in that one? What verse did, did he violate? Well, well, you know, don't be going in the New Testament. You can't violate those verses. They weren't written yet. No, the, the New Testament is based on principles of the Old Testament. So we would go to that one. You ready? Here, here we go, guys. Guys got to get a hold of this. It's, it's, it's not looking good for Lot right now if you're saying you can lose your salvation, okay? It's not looking good for Lot. Okay, here we go. We did that one. Okay, here it is. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Now, question, guys. Did Lot abstain from all appearance of evil as he moved in a city that had appearance of all evil? <laughs> guys, we're just reading the Bible. I'm not being mean. It, it, we're reading the Bible, guys. Did he abstain from the appearance of evil? And if your answer is, no, he didn't abstain from the appearance of evil, is that a sin? If that's a sin, he, well, well he, he didn't abstain from the appearance of evil, so it would be a sin. So he sinned. Because the Bible says to abstain from the appearance of evil. It's a command. So you have Lot violating the, the word of God. So he sinned. Now here's the problem, guys. If you can lose your salvation, 
Lot already committed three sins, and and he, he, obviously he'd have to have lost his salvation already after the first sin he committed, right? He called on the Lord, right? Genesis 13, 5. Didn't he call on the Lord and he saved? Yes. Uh, Romans 10, 13. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Right. Disobedience being a sin. You, I mean, we call it disobedience, but it's still a sin, right? Okay, very good, guys. Very good. Okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going so you guys understand that. Three times, we got three whammies now on Lot. Okay, let, here we go again. Okay, remember he pitched his tent towards Sodom, right? Then he's living in Sodom and Gomorrah. And now, look, guys, you ready? We're going to the next one. Genesis 19.1. And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. Here's a problem, guys. What are you doing sitting in the gate of Sodom? Look, guys, it goes a lot deeper than what you think. You think, oh, it's just a gate. You know, he's just... Why, why isn't he in his house away from the Sodomites? He's like, he's like out and about just fellowshipping with them. Let's go to a verse, guys. We're going to see which one he's violating there. You ready, guys? Uh, let's do this. 2 Corinthians 6.14 B not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and will be their God and they shall be my people. All right, guys. I care about you, care about your walk with the Lord. But if you have a bad walk with the Lord, you can't lose your salvation. <laughs> it's pretty simple. Now, guys, what happened a lot? We only we covered four. That's four whammies. Pitched his tent towards Sodom, first of all, and now he progressed, right? What did he do then? Next thing he did, he lived in Sodom and Gomorrah. Then what did he do? Now he's roaming around at the gate meeting the angels at the gate. Well, it just says he was there at the gate. So he's there, obviously, fellowshipping with these sodomites. That's, uh, it's not looking good. It's not looking good for somebody that, you, if you're saying that you have, you cannot sin after you're saved, then Lot, boy, we're, we're about to get in deep, guys. Put on, put on your boots. Get ready. Strap your seatbelt on. Oh, amen. Amen, arising. Amen. So, uh, yeah, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, yeah, I just, just stay along. Uh, if you follow me, you can watch the other ones I did. I'm a, I think I'm on part, what part am I on now, guys? I think it's part nine now of eternal security. So what we're, what we're discussing, though, is can you lose your salvation after you get saved if you commit a sin? Yeah, part eight. Amen. Yeah, I, I, I've, been, I've been hitting these like all evening. So, yeah, I, I'm losing track. So, um, but yeah, um, if you get, if you trust Jesus Christ, this is what we're saying. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you believe that he died for your sins, he was buried, he rose again the third day, you're absolutely saved. If you've trusted and believed on that, you're saved. It's that simple. And, and the Bible says people can't grasp the simplicity in Christ because it's, it's like it's too good to be true. You're telling me that all I got to do is believe that he died for my sins is buried and rose again a third day and that's it? That's all I got to do is believe in that and I'm saved? Yes. But you got to be sincere when you believe. And that's the point. And, and anybody that's sincere and believes on Jesus, he'll save them. But the problem is people are saying that once you're saved, okay, get ready for this. They say once you're saved, if you commit a sin after you're saved, a really, really bad one, you lost your salvation. And, and that's not that's not in the Bible. It's nowhere in the Bible. Amen, Scotty. Amen. Yeah, it's good to stay in it because, uh, you know, I'm going to have to end up teaching this class at the Land School of the Bible. So I definitely want to brush up on it before I teach it in the class. So, um, but yeah, guys, um, 
You cannot lose your salvation. You need to you need to trust in the gospel solely and completely and have faith that Jesus can save you from every sin you've ever committed and will commit in the future. He'll forgive all those sins the moment you believe on him. How many times do you need to believe on him? One time. So you don't keep believing in Jesus. You believe on him one time and you're saved forever. Now what comes after that is living a holy, sanctified life and that doesn't start right away. You've got to grow in the Lord. You learn things out of the Bible and you stop doing this and you start doing that. You flee from this, these kind of sins. Discernment is the key, right? And to have discernment, you've got to learn. You've got to learn the Bible. And the more you learn in the Bible, the better discernment you're going to have through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit works through the scriptures. He doesn't just come upon you and you automatically know what's right and what's wrong. He, he, he works solely through the scriptures. No scriptures, no understanding of how to live a righteous, sanctified life. That's practical, guys. So, so it's very important you read your Bible and know the will of God for you in your life. Amen. Amen, Scotty. So with that being said, guys, where are we at right now in Lot? And so we're using Lot as our example to show that Lot sinned and sinned and sinned willingly, and he's still saved. That's our point we're making right now as, Lot, as I'm hitting all the Lot uh, verses. We're showing that Lot was saved, Genesis 13, 5. And then Lot pitched his tent towards Sodom, which he knew he shouldn't have pitched his tent towards Sodom. So he's violating, you know, making provision for the flesh. And he's violating the word of God. And then he not only pitched his tent towards Sodom, but then he went to dwell in Sodom. And then now he's standing at the gate, fellowshipping with Sodomites. And now we're going to hit the next one. Okay, guys, just to catch everybody up on here. Okay, here's our next one. This is a doozy, guys. Put your boots on. Put your gloves on. Put your chemical warfare outfit on, guys. This is pretty, this is pretty wicked, man. Genesis chapter 19, verse 8. Here we go. We're going to go context because we want to know what's going on here. So let's go back. See the paragraph mark there? We're going to get some context. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to, came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. And Lot went out the door unto them and shut the door after him. Now what is Lot going to say? And said, I pray you. Brethren, do not so wickedly. It'd be great if it stopped right there, but it doesn't. <laughs> Look at verse 8. Behold now, I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye unto them as it is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of of my roof. Woo! You can have my daughters. You can have my unmarried daughters. You know how vexed Lot's soul really was? You can have my daughters. No, no. He wasn't like, you wicked men, get out of here, man, you sodomites. I need to move out of here. No. No, no. Guys, leave these men alone. You can have my daughters, you perverts, because I'm a pervert too, and I'm going to give you my daughters. And do unto them as you would have them do. Who cares what the daughters feel? Lot was perverted. That's unacceptable. Lot, you ready? Lot was a sinner, just like you and me. Lot was saved. And if you're saved today, I'm saved Lot was saved like you and me. That's what he did. That's what he did. You say, you'll know them by their fruits. Oh yeah? How was Lot saved and having that fruit? Okay, is that what you classify as fruit? 
Oh, everybody just give your daughters the sodomite so they can do sexual immoral, immoral acts with them. And that's the fruit you need to have. Is that what you're saying? Guys, you got to read the Bible. You got to study the Bible, guys. Because, guys, you are not saved by not sinning. You are saved by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. He saves you. He preserves you. And there's no sin that you can commit that's going to make you lose your salvation. Because Lot is the proof. And I'm going to prove it even more because we didn't even hit everything. First, we saw Lot was saved, Genesis 13, 5. He called on the name of the Lord. Now I'm going to show you some more here, okay? Here we go, guys. Here we go. Okay, let's flip it, guys. Genesis 13, 1936. You ready? Here we go. Remember, get that seatbelt on. Let's go back. We need some context. And Lot, let's start here in verse 30. And Lot went up to Zor and dwelt in the mountain and his two daughters with him. For he feared to dwell in Zor and he dwelt in a cave, he and his two daughters. And the firstborn said unto the younger, our father is old and there is not a man in, in the earth to come into us after the manner of all the earth. Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night. The firstborn went in and lay with her father, and he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. And it came to pass on the morrow... That the firstborn said unto the younger, Behold, I lay yesterday night with my father. Let us make him drink wine this night also. And go thou in and lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night also. And the younger arose and lay with him. And he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. Thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father. All right, guys. Wow, that was pretty wicked. Wow, that was really unrighteous. Wow, that really sound like somebody wasn't saved, doesn't it? He committed incest with his daughters, and they both had a baby. Edom, Moab. That's how, that's how they came to be. Pretty wicked, guys. I'm telling you guys right now, Lot was pretty wicked. I can't find a thing Lot did that was actually righteous, except for the fact in Genesis 13, 5. Didn't realize how messed up Lot was. Amen, amen, uh, Maya, a amen. Lot was so messed up, man. It, he's a sinner, man. He's a, wow. He's a, he's a pervert, man. Slept with his own daughters. He let them fill him up with wine, so he, he committed the act. Said he perceived it not, but he still committed the act. He's a sinner. And so, okay, you guys ready for this? You guys ready for this? We just learned about six things about Lot, or five, five or six things about Lot, that's totally unrighteous, unholy. No way Lot could be saved. There is no way... You could convince me out of that testimony that Lot is saved. Who's Lot? That's, that's Abram's brother. That's who Lot is. If you read the Bible, go to Genesis 13. You can learn about Lot and how he called on the Lord in Genesis 13, 5. So Lot called on the Lord. He was saved. Abram called on, on, on the Lord and Lot did also. So they both called on the name of the Lord. They're saved. Romans 10, 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ephesians 2, 8, for by grace are you saved through faith. So Lot had faith, Abram had faith. Enoch walked with God, amen, he had faith, amen. So, you guys ready? Out of all that testimony I just read you about Lot, he pitched his tent toward Sodom. He dwelt in Sodom. He was at the gates of Sodom, fellowshipping with Sodomites. He, he, he offered his unmarried daughters to Sodomites and so they could, they could do with whatever they want. Who knows, maybe even kill them. 
Um, Lot committed incest with both of his daughters. You're going to tell me that man saved? Show me the good things he did besides Genesis 13, 5, besides calling on the name of the Lord. Come on, show me. There isn't a verse. There isn't a verse that, that Lot did that, that showed he was righteous. He had no walk with the Lord at all. You guys ready? You guys ready for this? Here we go. Let's flip it. Second Peter 2 4. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into the chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the, the world of the ungodly, and turned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an end sample unto those that after should live ungodly. Look, you ready? And delivered. Now explain this to me, guys. Just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, parenthetical statement, for that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his what? His wicked soul or his righteous soul? That's right, guys, his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. That was some labor, guys. Good old Lot. Could I even call him good old Lot? You be the judge. He wasn't good at all. He had no testimony at all, period. But you know what he did? Genesis 13, 5. I showed it to you. He called on the name of the Lord by faith. Ephesians 2, 8. There's your verse. Guys, nobody can maintain salvation. If we, have, if we could maintain it, we would all lose it. Look at Lot. And who knows, guys? Who knows where our thoughts go? Who knows the kind of the imaginations we have? Guys, we're all sinners, man. That's why we need Jesus Christ. And, and, and every day is, is being renewed daily by us yielding to the Spirit. Will you yield to the Spirit or will you yield to the flesh? That choice is up to you. The Holy Spirit will let you sin. He will. Ephesians 4.30 says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. So you can grieve the Spirit. You can do that if you want to. But how do you expect God to bless you in your life? How do you expect God to do anything for you in your life? All you're going to do is reap what you sow. You, you sow to the flesh. You reap corruption. You're going to reap the whirlwind, guys. Don't do it. Don't do it. When you serve God, serve God because you love Him. Amen. Amen, Maya. We need to walk away. And that, that comes from a willingness to do that. And so, definitely, the Holy Spirit will help you. How does He help you? Through the Word of God. Getting understanding. Prayer. Um, going to church, being around the fellowship of believers. That's how, that's how you can travel on the right direction. Um, you're not making provisions for the flesh by doing those things. So hopefully that makes sense, guys. Um, I'm nobody special. I'm just a saved person that believed on Jesus Christ. Um, I'm no pastor. I'm no apostle. I'm no prophet. I'm no name it. I'm no, I'm no anointed man of God. <coughs> Provisions for the flesh, we'd get that in context. Um, but in this case, if we're speaking of Lot, he made provision for the flesh by pitching his tent towards Sodom and Gomorrah. And what happened? He ended up in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. And then what? He was in the gate fellowshipping with those Sodomites. Pretty much in a nutshell, he made provision for the flesh. And so, no, don't do it. I said in that case, for, for Lot, no, don't do it. Watch out. Watch out where you go. That's the practical lesson. Watch out where you go. Guys, if, you, if you're an alcoholic today, 
and 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 and, uh, and I'll believe in like this alcoholism, these ism things. I believe people do things willingly, according to Romans chapter seven and eight. But if if you've been struggling with alcohol and you've, your flesh just leans that direction, and if you really struggle with that, this is what I tell you: then don't go and witness down at a bar if you know that you're easy to fall into that. Uh, temptation to fall into that. I would say don't make provision for your flesh by going there. And that's how and that's how you would apply those things. And so no you wouldn't if you if you know your flesh is is leaning towards a certain way. Like some people they can't be around women, you know, women that are dressed, you know, immodestly. You know, they're wearing short shorts. It makes the man's mind to drift into sinful thoughts. Then then don't go to places where women are that are dressed immodestly. Yeah, amen, Scotty. Yeah, we need to watch where we go. And so, yeah, that's not making provision for the flesh. And so, so guys, if you can handle, you know, going out to say like Church Street, like I, I used to go out to Church Street before we started the van ministry here at our church. Because so now I don't stay out late at Saturday nights to go out to Church Street to, to, in Orlando, Florida, to tell people about, you know, the gospel. Because there'd be a lot of women, lewd women walking by, you know, with short, short mini skirts and shorts and, and all that you know, and, and, and hardly, you know, anything on. And, and I would have to control my, my mind and my thoughts. And I'd have to look away all the time because, you know, I don't want my mind to drift. And I'm telling you, one of my weaknesses was women and when I was lost and undone. And even when I got saved as a carnal Christian and, and I was, I was still saved, but I was, my mind was still wandering off. And so what I, what I needed to do was I needed to, to cast down those thoughts. And how do you do that? By trying your hardest not to look at them. By not by trying to avoid by 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 whenever you have a thought to hurry up and think of something else, and and see even if you have the thought you still sin. You see what I'm saying? So nobody sinless. Now we should sin less, but nobody's sinless, and and that's the point. And so guys, um, Lot, uh, boo for holiness walk. Um, David, boo for holiness walk murderer I mean come on guys adulterer <laughs> I mean we go all oh, job boo job sinned job thought he was right in his own eyes <sighs> don't we quote those verses in proverbs to lost people you know uh we are right in our own eyes but the lord pondereth the spirits we quote all those verses and then we look at job and say no no job can say that cuz he's sinless no, Job's a sinner just like everybody else. Same thing with Lot. Lot's a sinner just like everybody else. The thing about Job and Lot is one had a better walk with the Lord than the other. But the, but the, but the destination for both of those guys is the same. They're both saved. And that's, that's my point. This is eternal security, guys. The moment you believe on Jesus Christ, you're saved. Now, how do we apply that in the Old Testament? Well, they couldn't believe on Jesus Christ, obviously, right? Because Jesus wasn't there yet. Matthew 1 says his name shall be called Jesus. There was no Jesus before then, right? There is more hope for a fool than for a man who thinks he is wise in his own eyes. Right, right. And see, see, Des, you can apply that verse to Job right there in when he said that. And that's what, that's what um, Elihu was saying to him. Elihu was bu rebuking him. And and, and Elihu could have rebuked him with that verse you just gave. And so that's the point, guys. That's the point. And so, um, guys, um, none of us, none of us can measure up to a holy life right now, classified by not sinning anymore. None of us can do that. But we can live a holy life in the, you ready? In the sense of we will respond to the Bible when we learn, like right now, you guys say you're learning something, right? I had a few people say on here they're learning something. So what you do, right, you, if you changed your belief, right, what you're doing is you're changing something that you may have have viewed wrongly, which we call that sin, and changed it and viewed it rightly. And see, see what I'm saying? So, guys, we sin all the time, but what we need to do is every time we realize we're wrong about something, we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 8 and 9. So guys, that's, how, that's what we do. And so every time we do that, every time you learn something new in the Bible, you change it. 
And, and guess what happens? Romans 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And you ready? Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. So, guys, transformed. It didn't say you automatically had the mind. This comes little by little. It comes by your devotion to yielding to the things of God, like the Word of God, pretty much in a nutshell. So guys, it's important you do that. I care about your walk with the Lord. People think that, you know, the once saved, always saved guys, they pretty much can do whatever they want. They, those guys go out to the club. Guys, I've never been out to the club since I've realized that Jesus saved my soul uh, to not sin anymore. He saved my soul to not sin anymore. Do I still sin? Yes. But ever since I learned that it's about my love and my relationship with Jesus Christ, not hellfire hanging over me if I sin. Guys, I've never been out to the club ever since. Guys, I never did the drinking and all. I mean, I didn't drink to begin with, but I didn't do none of that stuff. I, I stopped fighting. I was, I was a fighter. I fight all the time. I stopped doing that stuff, guys. I start picking fights. I got out of the gang. I'm not in a gang anymore. I started doing this stuff, guys. So what I'm saying, guys, it's possible for you to be saved and still be sinning and some willful sinning that you're doing and you're still saved. But you guys got to understand this, guys, because it's, it's what we're looking for in the Bible isn't a justification because, you know, we don't want, you know, certain things to be because our heart says, you know, they can't be because if, it, if they are, they're just going to pretty much, it, they're going to undermine God. They're going to undermine Jesus if those things are. And so we can't do that. We got to say, wait a minute. If God wants people to be saved by his power only, by the gospel, and, and God says, well, that's how you get saved. And if you want to sin, you can. You could sin willfully if you want to. God could do that if he wanted to. But the problem with that is God's looking for people that love him, not people that are that are just, you know, obeying some laws. Uh, if our arm causes us to sin, I have to get you'd have, you'd have to give me that reference, Des, and I'd, I'd get in the context of that one. Uh, but um, but but you pr you pretty much get the gist of what I'm saying, right? About Lot, he has a righteous soul. Declared in Second Peter, I mean, and Des, what I would appeal to you, even if you take all those other verses that you're calling out on me right now, what I would do is, I would say, okay, the the stuff that I've given is pretty clear. It's pretty clear in, in the scriptures that that these people were still righteous, even though they've sinned. And so you'd have to take the passages that are clear. And you would say, wait, what about those other passages? Well, they might not be as clear as I think they are. So this would involve more studying of context. And that's, that's basically what we would do is if you, if you threw the verse up there or you showed me the verse or whatnot. And I, I would challenge you to just study the verse as well yourself. And, and I'm probably going to get off in a minute. It's really late. But, um, I, I mean, I've been at this at least three or four lessons here. And, Des, if you would, I mean, go back and watch some of this. I actually covered some, some other stuff on here. I don't think you were on. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure you might have been on. But, um, but I did cover some other stuff that I, I did kind of want you to see, you know, concerning this eternal security. And, again, guys, I have, I have a lot of verses on this, guys. Right, right. So, um, so if you would, guys. Rewatch these. They only they're only up for 24 hours. But if you if you go to my channel, and and how you get there is, you know, you hit the Google Edward Worth Jesus Saves Periscope, and you'll bump into my channel there, and you can watch all the videos again because I've got them saved to where they won't delete off of my channel on a computer, and I, I think you can do it on your phone too if you go directly on the web. So guys, watch those, man. I mean, guys. I used to question my salvation all the time, and it was miserable. And the Bible says I can have peace with God. I had no peace when I thought I could lose it. Guys, the Bible says I can have unspeakable joy. I, can, I have peace that passeth all understanding. Guys, I didn't have that when I knew I could lose it. I was always scared. Oh, I need to control my thoughts. I was no different from a Mormon just trying to keep the laws. And you know what happened? When I realized that 
It's not about keeping the laws. It's about loving my Savior. And if I love my Savior, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to keep those laws. It's pretty much it. When you thought you could lose it. Yeah, I didn't have any peace, Des. I had no peace. I was so miserable. I went to bed at night, man. I had no peace in my heart. I mean, I believe Jesus died for my sins, Des. I'd have no peace, man. I kept thinking I could lose it. And I, I was so miserable. I, I, I can't even describe. And, and, and I don't know, Des. I know you can see I'm passionate about when I, when I talk about this. And, and you can see me. You know, I lift up my voice. You know, my eyebrows go down. It looks like I'm angry. And I, I, I mean, I am, I am angry because I, mean, I was so miserable when I was living that life. And, 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 I, and I talked to Ellis one about it too, you know, and, and I was like, you know, Ellis thought, Ellis thought he could, you know, that, you know, he could lose it. And then, and then he was like, but then he was on the other end. He was like, well, but yeah, you gotta, you gotta live a holy life. 